How many times do I have to paint a red cloak before I get sick of it? That's not a theory I'm going to test right now, but I do want to address the idea that it might actually be something to get sick of and what to do about painting burnout. Motivation to paint starts with the right model. And while this probably sounds like a segue into showing you what models I'll be painting, it is, it's also important. For the models, I've got more one-page rules rat men to work on. This time it's the Night Scouts, who have a pretty battle-ready assassin to go along with them. Or the Snipers, which come in teams with some pretty funky machinery. For this video, I'm going to be going with the Night Scouts, just one of them because all their sneakiness comes at a cost, so I only need one to fit into my list right now. Having a model you're excited to paint is a pretty important part of keeping yourself from getting burnt out. That's why I tend to prefer armies that have a lot of variety between units, so that even when the colors are similar, they're still not the same model. This Night Scout will have way more cloth than the other Ratman units, so will require a different strategy to get all the scheme's colors on it. And while this seems like an obvious concept, sometimes it can be surprising just how much you don't like painting a particular thing or character type. I have a list of things I don't like to paint. Dwarves as a fantasy race just do not excite me in the slightest. I don't like how they look even at their best most of the time, and so would struggle to paint any of them which would lead to burnout really fast. Large wings are another one I used to dread painting. Some people looked at large angels or dragons or griffins or demons and think, wow, so cool. For me, the first thing I'd think is, ugh, those wings, no thanks. I'm a bit over that now, but when the process to painting wings is both a front and a backside in a set of two, it felt like painting four of the exact same thing, which is why they burnt me out. So just know what you like and don't like to paint before picking out a full force of models to do. If you hate painting skin, don't do an all barbarian army. If metallics are a problem, maybe stay away from robots. Then paint one. Use it to figure out your scheme, but also gauge how much you actually enjoy the process. I thought painting white fur on these guys would be a chore, being white from a dark base and all, but I found the layering fun and simple, so went with it. But if I didn't, I could have easily changed course after the first model. Doing these videos, I try and keep myself on a deadline, which means sometimes I have to force myself to paint. Even if I look at my desk and I just don't want to go over to it, I have to force myself to get started. Normally, I'd say if you're not on a deadline, don't do this. A model you're forcing yourself to paint is never going to look its best. But sometimes forcing yourself to at least start can get you in the mood once you get going. And it's just that initial hurdle of actually starting that was keeping you from doing so. But now that it's happening, you might find yourself enjoying it. That won't always be the case though, and sometimes it's just not going to be a good painting day. That's fine, again, don't make yourself do something you don't wanna do, it's just a hobby. But if you wanna to stick to a schedule, sort of, what you can do is force yourself to do the things that you pretty much have to force yourself to do anyway, to prepare for the next good painting day. That means things like changing your paint water out and cleaning the cups before refilling them with new water. If you use a wet palette, give it a good clean and rinse while changing up the papers and preparing a new one. If not, cleaning your regular palette and wells of old paint. Organizing models based on the priority they need to be done in. Removing some that aren't that urgent from your site for a bit might make it feel like you have less to do. Organizing your paint, too. Make sure it's where you expect it all to be. Sometimes I'll have a lot of little paint and model bits from my last project, so I'll make sure to vacuum those up. Set out paper towels so it's there when you need it. Give your airbrush a deep cleaning so that there won't be any issues when you get started with it. And while you have the airbrush out, maybe prime some models that are coming up so there's less to prepare with them later. Really anything you can think of to just make starting way easier for yourself when you do have a better painting day. It will save time and let you paint more when that time comes.
Another way I like to combat burnout is to set goals. I mean, the overall goal is still the same, paint the model till it's finished. But by breaking down the process into smaller goals, it creates breakpoints. For me, I like to work in parts. Skin, then pants, then fur, then leather, that kind of thing. And I'll put out the paint I need for each one, so each one becomes a breakpoint. If I get done the skin and fur and I need to stop, I know exactly where I'll be picking it back up. Even if you paint in other ways, like say base coating everything first or using a dip method, find those breakpoints so that you have an opportunity to take a rest while not leaving in the middle of something. Once you get the zenithal done, ask yourself if you need a break. If no, keep going. Then when the base coats are done, ask yourself again, do I need a break? Something like a dip or a heavy wash is a perfect breakpoint because there's a physical reason to stop, waiting for things to dry. The important part though is to take breaks before moving on if you need them. It can be something short or maybe being done for the day, but knowing that you have stopping points takes some of the stress away from what you're currently doing, knowing you can stop if you need to after. Sometimes we painters like to dangle carrots in front of ourselves to help us finish projects. You know, reward ourselves with something if we get the work done. That works, but I find it only works if the reward comes often enough. It's easy to say to yourself, if I get this army done, I'll buy or print a large unit for it, which would be a nice way to finish a large army off. But what about the unit you're working on right now? What do you get for finishing that? Just another unit to paint. That's not a reward. And that's why I really like the idea of campaign painting. Since this is really about painting for gaming, the gaming part serves as a reward for getting the painting done. And in a campaign style where each month you add one new unit to your army, it gives you time to get that unit done, but when you do, you now get to play the game with it. And by the end, your full force will be painted, and there was no rush on the way there. I really like One Page Rules' release schedule for something like this, since each month you get some stuff for the army you're working on until all the models are available. Though if you're doing the campaign with friends, you can use a printing schedule instead if you already have the STLs, or just not buying new models until you're ready for them. So if you wanted to do Beastmen who are already fully released, just limit yourself to only printing one unit each month. Or if you already have some, printing a unit you haven't painted yet each month. That encouragement from your gaming friends will keep pushing you, and the games will be the reward. And that's also a great segue into my final tip to stave off burnout. Painting socially can be a really great way to not only have motivation to paint, but actually schedule a time to do so. By painting with friends, it puts you in an environment where you can focus on painting, but still distract from the tedium that sometimes comes with it, but also has the added benefit of being able to get advice or opinions or help immediately instead of having to type up a few paragraphs on Reddit. Even at home on your own, there's a way to paint socially. There's always streamers on Twitch at every hour of the day, and sometimes it's where I go just to see what other painters are up to, what they're getting done, and having a look at what they're working on just to motivate myself to work on something. If you're not the shy type, streaming yourself, or joining a Discord chat with other painters will make sure you have some company for the long sessions that painting miniatures sometimes come with. If you prefer more face-to-face, -face, check with your local stores to see if they have any special days just for painting or classes. I know my favorite store near me does painting every Sunday where you can go in and just paint up whatever you're working on, but a store painter will also be there to share advice and tips. Some stores might even provide paint and models for those really getting started and aren't sure it's quite for them yet. By committing to paint these days for a set amount of time, it's essentially you setting aside time to do miniatures painting. And there's a definite end, so there's no worry about going too long or burning out, because it all ends when the store closes. I don't think Games Workshop does this anymore, but you used to be able to go in at any time and just sit and paint with the staff. When I was staff, some of my favorite memories aren't from the games, but conversations I had with guests and other employees while we sat and painted. Time flew by, and models got done, but there was never any hint of burnout. Except that one time our manager made us paint a whole army of guys in yellow cloaks, but 
that's a story for another time. Please subscribe if you like this video, and check the link in the description to my Discord where I talk all sorts of nonsense about miniatures painting, provide critique on paint jobs, and occasionally stream.